I used to be 230 pounds. I ate a lot of junk food. I ate a lot of junk food. Um, cakes, cookies, candies. Um, I did it on a daily basis. Even the food that I was supposed to eat that was like, you know, normal or, you know, like a meal. Something well-rounded with like fried and all kinds of lacking in any sort of nutritional value. And a lot of fast food, like McDonald's, Arby's, um, especially when I was in college. Like on a daily basis, like every day after class, I would go and get like, you know, some sort of supersized meal, usually a double cheeseburger with like fries and milkshake. And I would eat it. <laughs> I had like very low levels of activity. I didn't care to walk or exercise. It was just an annoyance that I didn't want to deal with, so I didn't do it. Reflection from my childhood. I tried like many different methods to like, you know, lose weight before. One of them was like, I think the one I tried the most was, you know, the whole cold turkey thing. My sister had no problem doing it, but I did. And I was trying to listen to her advice and it never worked out for me. Even when I would see like, you know, the weight loss shows on TV and people would be like, okay, you're just gonna empty out your entire fridge of everything that you've come to know is like yummy goodness and you're not gonna touch it again, ever. That never worked for me. Because like most kids, I did not like vegetables. I also had oral allergy syndrome, which made it difficult for me just to, you know, go in the kitchen and grab like an apple or a carrot, that's normal for a lot of people. When we have oral allergy syndrome, everything just becomes itchy. Itchy to the gods. So uncomfortable, it was beyond belief. And I started thinking, I'm probably not supposed to eat this because it caused so much discomfort. I had given up and like most of the attempts that I made were like middle school through high school and nothing worked. So. I had resigned myself to being like just overweight, like it's just aesthetics. I could still function, move, and do things like any other normal person would do. And I thought that I was happy that way. I thought that I had made my peace. It wasn't until my father's health took a downward spiral that I rethought everything. My dad used to joke that when I was a little kid, he didn't think that I would grow any bigger. Like I would just stay a little doll forever. And then I found food. I definitely realized that some food was yummier than others. I had gotten teased a lot. I had tried the diet and exercise thing, but the process was just too slow. I would get frustrated, lose interest, and then on top of that, I couldn't fight my cravings. So I would lose like 10 pounds and then gain it back. I tried for years to just ignore it. It was crazy, and I was really sad, even though I tried not to show it. I don't think I was actually 230 just yet. My clothes were always uncomfortable. I was always uncomfortable. In college, um, I had I had really given up, and I ate my way to a size 18. My dad had also been overweight um, as a child, young adult, and of course, older adult. My dad had been a type 1 diabetic since before I was born. That progressed into type 2 diabetes that then gave way to kidney failure, then led to the amputation of both his legs. Right after my dad lost his legs, 
like the situation became so serious like I knew that it was serious in the first place but there was a change that was definitely visible and irrevocable being overweight for me became more than like an issue of vanity I started to see it as the eventual hindrance of my freedom I started to ask myself you know questions like I were actually in his situation like what would I do if I lost a limb or ended up on dialysis or lost my eyesight like I need those things and the whole thing just scared the pants off me something clicked I realized that my weight gain like wasn't an overnight thing it was slow gradual weight gain and I had always thought that there would be this magical solution where, you know, damn near overnight, I would be able to just rid myself of this burden. And I think that's why I failed so many times. And then I thought, well, who cares if it takes a long time? I took all the food that I knew was not the best for me, junk food and whatnot, and I split them into sectors. The first sector that I tackled was fast food. No fast food. Like, no McDonald's, no Arby's, no Burger King, no DQ, no Red Lobster whatsoever. The second, which I actually didn't mind, surprisingly didn't mind, uh, cakes, candies, um, anything super sugary that I could eat, you know, in the way of dessert. The third one, which was surprisingly hard, sugary drinks, sodas, juice, um, hot chocolate. I drank a lot of hot chocolate, even in the summer. I didn't just do them all at once. I specifically broke them up so that it would be easier to deal with these certain cravings a piece at a time so that I had less chance of failing and falling completely apart. And <laughs> I knew I needed exercise. I chose walking as my favorite form of exercise just because I am very accident prone and you know, choreography is quite hard sometimes. Simple and easy and I don't have to remember any steps or proper techniques. Um, besides that, it gives me time to clear my head. My sister had actually made a track in the backyard, you know, as a result of repetitive walking, and it's cute. It's like a little hiking trail, and I walk there at least once a week. So, with my diet and my exercise routine, um, the whole process took about three years for me to get out of the danger zone, as I would call it. Uh, I went from a size 18 to a size 8. It was a good number of years for my dad to see me remove myself from a situation that he was already in. And he was proud of me, and I was proud of myself. However, in uh, 2014, Dad went into the hospital. He was in there for two, about two and a half months. Sad to say that I had taken up my old habits with a vengeance. Um, I ate ice cream. I ate lots of ice cream, like a carton after carton. And, you know, there was some soda and there was caramel popcorn and I had derailed a lot of the work that I did. I never thought of myself as like an emotional eater, but that was when I realized that's exactly what I am. Eventually I began to turn it back around using the same method that I did to lose the weight in the first place. Okay, so the end of the video got a little down in mood. Obviously I was disturbed and it happens I guess. 
that's a whole nother day. I just wanted to make like a few amendments. I have since then incorporated juice into my daily diet. Juice is good. I hope this video has helped someone or inspired them or was just plain entertaining. Thank you for watching.